can you hear me hello yeah i can hear you yeah yeah uh, actually uh, in the person put uh, the statement you've written and lock dot yeah after after you declared dot sorry yeah that's ampersand loc dot yeah so what is the purpose of that dot is it not sufficient that we write ampersand loc yeah ampersand loc does good so but however when i declare macro variable so macro variables can also be declared with ampersand loc dot so that's a minor conventional difference it does not have really any impact so it's the way i generally define macro it's my practice to do that so that's why i have done it you can do it just as simple ampersand loc it's the same right uh, and loc and loc dot okay fine thanks yeah so uh guys going forward uh just for the next uh say uh, one hour or so just ping in your question to me on the chat box and i'll take it up one day yeah fine so uh now <clears throat> Another uh, variation that is important for library locations is declaring a library name to a remote server. Now, basically, there are two practices in the industry. One is you have your desktop, you have your system, and you are working in the SaaS, uh, in software in the desktop as as it as is. So, like now, I'm working in a desktop SaaS. However, there are some organizations or largely or most organizations they do not keep SAS on their base desktop so what they do is they have a virtual desktop in which SAS is actually kept so and from there there is a server where all data sets are kept so the way you do it is you first access through your desktop you access the virtual desktop from the virtual desktop you access the server and in that server you have all the data sets stored so basically the idea is to create data sets or to work in a server so in that case you need to actually connect your laptop or you need to map that server library to your desktop i mean your server to your desktop and so basically what happens is if I am in a virtual SaaS environment and submitting statements or submitting the programs in the server, I do not get to see the libraries in the in the SaaS interface as I can see now. So what I need to do is I need to map back that server uh, version to my desktop. And that is uh, the next part of our discussion. So basically what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to declare a library name to a remote server. So basically just you need to get a hang of things and people who have been working with uh, like virtual applications uh, or server they would know that you need to actually connect your virtual desktop to your server and you need to map back the like so if you are actually submitting a libname statement that gets submitted in the server and you cannot see it in the virtual desktop so you need to map back that server submitted library to your desktop and that is where this entire story comes in so basically we have uh, so our submit is a statement used to submit a remote i mean a library name specification or a set of codes to a remote server right so basically the our, our submit statement is used for executing saas programming statements that are in the local environment to execute on a remote saas session in the server this weight equals to yes option is used to specify that the statements under our submit is executed in a synchronous fashion. So it's executed one by one. So, so using our submit, you just uh, enter your, uh, you just submit the library part and the library execution in the remote server. The end our submit is used to terminate that our submit statement you just close our submit statement so only the library name generation would be submitted in the remote server and finally what you need to do is you need to map back the like the remote library to your desktop version of sas so over there you specify the lib name you specify the server equal to the server name and the server library reference 
so this statement this last set of statement libname stat server equals to the name of the server server library reference is this set of statement is used to map back the library created in the server to the local SAS environment right and the server equal to option is used to specify the name of the server where our submit executes so this is a very so I just cannot run this code and show you because there is no server at my end however when you are actually working at an organizational level you would see that like remote submit and people who are actually using these server SAS right so for them it becomes very uh, relevant and every time we are doing any kind of function we are always declaring them into the server now there are organizations who actually build up their entire database based on SAS so SAS has very complicated database management server connect creating server connections uh, access for protecting I mean leading to access or password protected libraries and everything within that so that entire uh, like entrance into the server and exiting the server and everything that is that would entirely be coordinated through SAS but that's a greater part of a separate story so over here uh, what we are trying to just what I, what I'm trying to just do is I'm just trying to walk you through the different possible arrangements that we have in uh, like while setting up or declaring libraries so basically we went across we came through four major kinds of uh, library creation purposes first is we came through the simple library creation that we know then we came through access protected libraries then we came in declaring library as as uh, macro variables and now what we have is declaring library named to a remote server so these are the four major parts that we tried to cover or that we went through now this is obviously very huge literature and there are and you can keep on exploring more to it but that's again a separate story now uh, after having specified libraries uh, the next important thing that needs to be noted is referencing data sets to the library so how do we refer data sets how do I know that a particular data set would be created in the user defined library while another data set would be created in a temporary library so what we are trying to do is we are trying to create reference data sets to different libraries and how do we do that so the data sets created in a SAS session would either be stored in a permanent or in a temporary library a permanent libraries so when we are talking about permanent or assigning data sets to permanent libraries we are talking about something called a two-way reference so over here when we are referring the data sets to a permanent library we are specifying that create this data set by so and so name in so and so library and that format in which we are actually writing the codes is libname dot data set name this is a two-way referencing because you need to if you do not specify anything before as a library name then by default the data set gets created in the temporary library right so that's the work library now if you want to actually create out a permanent data set in a database then what you need to do is you need to look into and specify that data set or that particular library name so libname.dataset name would actually help you identify a particular library or I mean the location a data set name and the reference to the library where this particular data set needs to be created right so this is uh, as far as the referencing the data sets is concerned in the I mean this is as far as libraries or library declaration library creations are concerned now libraries obviously is the first step to your data extraction process in SAS now having declared I mean having discussed libraries the way they work the way they can be assigned under different environments we next move into the data extraction process in SAS so when I'm talking about data extraction process within the SAS environment what is it that I am trying to talk about 
what I am trying to talk about is how, so within SAS there might be different folders, different libraries from which I might want to work with a data set and create a new data set in my library, do some kind of data transformations on it, uh, create new variables or remove some variables, rename some variables and there are a lot of ways, a lot of actions that I can perform on one single variable, on one single data set. So over here what I need to understand is how is it that this data extraction process can be done within the SAS environment. So when I have different data sets stored in different libraries, there might be libraries with read access equal to read only accesses. Uh, there might be libraries with both read and write accesses. So how do I work between each of these libraries? So extraction data sets within the SAS environment involves all these things. And so basically what I refer to data extraction is using extracting data sets from one library one or more library and getting into one single library or like getting a data set from one library doing some transformation and creating it on my own library. So data extraction processes can be varied. It can be as simple as backing up a file from one library to another library as well as it could be creating fresh data sets with new variables from an existing data set. However, it could be as complicated as creating a master data set using different files. So this data extraction process within SAS can be done again in two ways. One is using a data step and the other is using the SQL procedure. So this, uh, this uh, database extraction or extracting databases from different internal databases, from different data sources is what we, con is what we discuss next. Right, so over here, so we start off with a very simple kind of uh, data extraction process in SAS and that is called, that is what you call copying a data set from one library to another. So just before I move on, I'll just take a minute or a couple of minutes pause and I would ask you if you have any questions. In case you have any questions, feel free to ping them in your chat box. Else, give, else put in the message that it's clear so that I can move on ahead. Just take two minutes, sit down, think about what I said and then ping in your questions on the chat box.
Uh, thanks, Navneet, for your question. So, uh, what Navneet and uh, like Sumit uh, asked, sorry, Navneet asked me was, uh, what was the purpose of the weight equals to yes variable once again? So, basically, I'll just re reiterate on it once that it ensures the syn uh, synchronous execution of the uh, of a code. Now, what he asked me was that, what if it's not there? Now, this when you are submitting codes in a server, right? It might be that you are submitting, you submitted a code A and that in the process of execution and then you execute another code. You start executing another code without yes 
the way it goes to yes option one code may get terminated halfway and the second might turn operating so however to prevent that it's a data control which you put in over there weight equals to yes so the default value that weight takes is or without even weight equals to yes it would be a uh, like a synchronous execution so however we just generally mention that weight equals to yes option to ensure that the data controls are in place so when you are writing an industry code in an industry you just do not write the code but there are certain governance and data like code control and governance and audit processes so they look for these things and this weight equals to yes option being there it documents the fact that yes the codes have been executed in a synchronous fashion so i might come back to you say 6 months down the line after you have submitted a model and come back and tell you boss what is the guarantee that the codes have been run one one after the other and not and there have been no termination or disruption in between so the fact that the code contains a weight equals to yes option very well implies that this particular uh, that the codes have been executed in a synchronous fashion it specifically prevents multiple execution of codes at one point of time so only once after a particular code has been executed would the next start so that is where your r submit weight equals to yes option ka importance comes in so that's a very specific data control that needs to be there even without it you can write it and the same thing would operate but yes it needs to be there for some uh, like governance controls now i believe the other option that you have with weight equals to yes is uh, weight equals to no however i have not tried out with uh, weight equals to no ever i did not dare to but yes this is the option that uh, actually helps you or it ensures that your codes would be executed in a synchronous fashion one after the other so that was a question that came up from navneet so i am very sure that as we proceed we would be getting up more questions